What got you into trouble? says the bald head to the other chap. Well, I'd been selling an article to take the tot off the teeth, and it does take it off, too, and generally the enamel along with it. But I stayed about one night longer than I ought to and was just in the act of sliding out when I ran across you on the trail this side of town, and you told me they were coming. I would say my job description at this point is an audiobook narrator producer, and also I produce audio theater, audio dramas, movies for the mind. They're essentially TV and or movie films, but without the visuals. We want to create something that's really immersive, that you have the headphones on and you just feel like you're just surrounded by whatever is going on in this particular story, that you are a part of it with your eyes closed and your imagination is just boosh just blossoms. Uh, one of the beauties of working with graphic novels is that you essentially have a storyboard. Everything's right there in front of you. And so I would use that really extensively in terms of shifting up perspective, um, you know, jumping from you know one locale to another. For Lock and Key, we actually did it as a field recording. We went out into the various locales, like we did it in a haunted house, which was uh, purportedly all haunted. I mean, I never saw anything. Um, on a beach in the um, an old mill in Biddeford where um, it was an old mill, so we actually had that for our cavern sequence. So anywhere we could actually approximate what was in the story in the terms of the graphic novel, using that as our storyboard, we would find those locales to approximate that setting. And the actors were able to move about rather than standing in, in front of a static microphone. They were actually able to engage with one another, so it made it more like a live action and that actually plays out really, really nicely when you're listening to it. And thereby, you know, really retaining the artist, the creator's sort of vision. For example, with Titanium Rain, where the character is a pilot in this jet fighter that's diving to the ground, um, and uh, you can hear, I, I made sure that, you know, it's not just the engine noise, it's not just him grunting or whatever, he's flipping switches, and the stress on the metal is vibrating, and the, even though you can't hear it, but there's a wind racing by outside, all of that you have to kind of layer in as to degrees, and so you just build this with just sound. Um, lock and key is probably what I'm fondest of. That's, that's the one I project I'm most, most proud of. It was two grueling weeks of high tension, high, very stressful uh, recording. The very, we had actually booked um, at this, as I mentioned before, this haunted house, and Fred had gotten it, and we had two weeks scheduled there. We had actors coming up from New York and Boston, LA, and after which, uh, you know, which we were very successful, um, but it was one of the best experiences. I mean, you know, yes, all the stress, yes, all the tension, but it was still a really fun time. We were working with people who were all working together, trying to give the best they possibly could, you know, to make the best project, you know, they possibly could. And um, and that's what that's what really makes it exciting. You know, it's it's the sort of thing where you. You know, if it were easy, it would be boring. Lock and Key just has everything you could want. You know, it's got horror, it's got, you know, poignancy, it's uh, magic. So there's all these various things that pop up in, in it that it, he, you know, there are no boundaries. Um, and just to kind of give you a little background, Lock and Key is based on a family who suffer uh, a real incredible, um, tragedy in their lives with their father being killed uh, by this uh, um, by this character um, home invasion takes place and their mother is uh, raped and they return to their home their their old home that his their father grew up in and the youngest boy starts finding these keys and these various keys each have a particular power. Like um, if you unlock a door with one key and you open and you pass through, you, you die, you become a ghost. And then you return to your body and you're okay. So again, anything can happen in this world that he created. You just have to have the key. My name's Carlin Daigle. Uh, I'm a sound engineer, producer, sound designer. 
uh, I'm technically a freelance engineer, so here at Mind's Eye, I'm not an employee, so my job description isn't necessarily set in stone. It depends on what I'm doing. When I'm here, I'm recording generally uh, one actor uh, for audiobooks, so that would entail an actor coming in, uh, I set levels, we talk about characters, or we go over anything that we might need to. Um, I edit files, I send them to a proofreader, they listen and make sure everything's correct, they send them back, we fix things. That's like a normal day. Um, also, audiobooks specifically, it's really hard on you physically, you wouldn't think, but when you're focusing on something for long periods of time, I mean, I try to keep my sessions to around four hours now, but I used to do, you know, I used to just, before I really knew my limits, I would go six, eight hours, and it's just a lot for your ears to be in headphones listening. Like I mentioned with Lock and Key, the collaborative effort is really, really important. You know, people that actually really kind of give their all in a way that goes beyond their duties um, and really help to, you know, make a, a, a production, you know, come to life. As a director, I really, really, I, when I note it, you know, I appreciate it and I, you know, I, tr I track it and I make sure that, you know, those are the people who I gravitate towards again and again and again. And they're on the list of, you know, they're always on the short list. Carlin is an uh, engineer and director I've been working with uh, for a few years now. And I first met her when I did the Starling Project and that was at the studio in Portland. And um, all of us, uh, the actors, all of us fell in love with Carlin. She was just this no nonsense, just sitting there at the desk and doing her job. But every once in a while she'd come up with this quip or, or just you know, a reaction to something that was going on or something that was asked of her and would just have us all, oh my God. And we all loved her voice as well. We all, you know, a number of actors, can we get her in this? Can we get her in? So we actually, you know, asked her to do a little bit in the piece. She's just one of those people that, you know, she's, she's serious in what she does, but she's got so much heart and she really engages with people that she works with. Um, but you never feel that that's going to take the place of what she needs to get done. Mm -hmm. That she just is one of the best workers I've ever I've ever dealt with, and I'm I'm just so blessed to have her, you know, as a part of the team. It's great working with Bill. Yeah, he's um, he allows a lot of freedom, which I need. I'm just the type of person that I need to be able to do my own thing, and Bill lets me do that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've developed a friendship. It's been several years, so I really enjoy it. Um, you can elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> He's very talented. He's very talented. Did you do you want more? <laughs> Actors. I've been narrating uh, since God over twenty years. Uh, Nineteen ninety was when I started. Actually, that's twenty seven years. Um, and then as a producer over 20 years. So it's been a long haul. And I started off in the UK where I, where I lived for about 15 years and went out there as an actor and then uh, soon discovered that uh, the adage, who you know, as opposed to what you know, is incredibly important. So contacts, 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 just keep them all listed. Um, and it was a voice work that actually got me into uh, Bob the Builder. Um, I was doing a cartoon series where I was playing a uh, uh, burping, farting penguin called Elvis. <clears throat> Better off than in. Um, and from that, uh, it was the same company that actually then did Bob the Builder. When I was asked to play this character, I was planning on returning back to the States. Um, I had a, a family tragedy and, and felt it was time for me to move back and just be with, you know, closer to family. And um, so I, I got, you know, I, made a list of all of my American male friends who I thought could actually play the part as well, if not better, and said, oh, you got to see these guys because I'm not going to be around. And um, they brought them in, auditioned, but, you know, ended up, you know, playing the part. So um, it was a really fun gig. Uh, I got to play uh, other characters. So it was Bob, you know, um, can we fix it? Yes, we can. And also Farmer Pickles and Mr. Beasley and Mr. Sabatini making the pizza. Ah! So a whole bunch of other characters. So it was a lot of, you know, it was a really, really fun gig. And I did this, I uh, played the character of Bob and the others. Um, I started in 1999 and 
finished in around 2003. The producer who was working with me, uh, Sarah Ball, was moving on. She had left the company, and so I felt it was time for me to move on too. And I had an idea for another series myself that would have conflicted. So I felt it was time to just kind of say, okay, bye. And I've just started a new company, actually. So I've got a bunch of companies. I've got Mindside Productions, which is my solo company. Audio Comics, uh, where we did Starstruck and Titanium Rain, and um, that's what uh, we, we did for Lock and Key and X-Files. And um, that is now evolved into Pocket Universe Productions. So it's an, Pocket Universe becomes an overarching production company with Audio Comics as a subset. And now I just started another company with uh, Fred Greenhall, who is one of my very close friends. And uh, he's got a really nice phlegmatic attitude, just really low key, you know, and we're both problem solvers. So if, a, if something comes up, it's not like, who, why is this happening? You know, who, whose fault is this? It's just, what do we do to fix this? You know, so I hark it back to Bob the Builder. Um, so it's just really, you know, we work together really nicely and um, and he worked with me on Lock and Key and on X Files, and we both live here in Maine. We just felt it was, you know, uh, why not just set something together? And we've been working on the Dark Tome, uh, which my stepdaughters were both in, Emily and Becca, and uh, my stepson uh, uh, Ben. <laughs> Did you get that shot? <laughs> That's Emily. <laughs> and Ben was in um, what was it? Lock and Key played a bully. So some of Bill's quirks, I believe he's just a giant nerd. <laughs> like he's a really nerdy guy. He thinks he's always like trying to like make people laugh. Maria is a bee in my bonnet, and she's always you know seeking to try to disrupt my my life in any way she possibly can. And uh, she does this as a as a test of my endurance and um, my ability to you know withstand adversity. And she usually achieves her, you know, her goal. Um, usually my hair is like this and just, um, it's just a really hard life. Um, but it's just, you know, it's, it's the burden I bear. So I myself am trying to be something of an artist. I'm in film and it's really helpful having him around, honestly, because um, I can talk to him about certain things that he would know. Like, he produces a lot of things. He directs a lot of things. And so with this project that I'm doing for Mayhem, making my own short film, I'm very unsure about a lot of things, and I've been going to him about certain questions that he might know about, and he's just been very helpful about it because he knows, you know, productions and stuff, and he knows, like, dealing with actors and schedules and budgets and stuff. So, um it, having that aspect at, you know, I can call him or go over to the house and stuff and ask him questions and he's just really easy, eager to help me too. He, he always likes to help us out and um, yeah, it's just nice, I guess. <laughs> You're welcome, Bill. Uh, um, but yeah, he's just a really like outgoing, charismatic person, kind of like an enigma. So that's just Bill in a nutshell. And when I came on the scene, too, I mean, you know, marrying a single mom with five kids, uh, God knows. I mean, especially when you're, you know, like someone like Emily. <sighs> you guys know Emily, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so just between us, we'll talk. And uh, this Friday, which you guys are all welcome to come and join us at, uh, we're having a, a Dagaz December do, which is a lot of O's. But uh, it's to celebrate uh, Fred and I starting up our new company, Dagaz Media, and we're inviting a very few, uh, uh, very, uh, very few people who are, you know, people who are. It's a mix of actors and writers and um, uh, other producers and kind of a mixed bag. But they're people who have really kind of helped Fred and I along as well. Hey, Tim. Absolutely terrific. Well, he's, he's a, you know, I've worked with a lot of people over the years, and Bill is just the, the top of the cream of the crop. They're wonderful, but both in terms of doing production and a, a gifted as an actor. So it's nice that it's really fun.
So I think internships are really important um, and I think it's really important that you apply to every job that you can possibly do just to simply meet people. But for commercials you have to look directly into the camera and speak as if it's your best friend. But you've got to tell them about this wonderful thing that they've got to get because if they don't have this, forget about it. We've always brainstormed about what big crazy thing we'd like to do and we said, hey, we should go you know, do a Stephen King sort of thing. And then we tried to sort of get at Stephen King and it was sort of not happening. And uh, then I had learned about the works of Joe Hill. I was like, hey, yeah, screw Stephen King. Have you heard from Joe Hill? Joe Hill is really good and actually I think is better than Stephen King in a lot of ways. And Bill's like, okay, cool. Uh, but then like a month later, he's like, Fred, what do you think about doing a Joe Hill piece? I'm like, no, get out. What, what are you talking about? And he had told, talked to Audible about this idea of doing lock and key, and apparently they said, yes, we'll meet with you guys. So that was sort of how I, and I was actually really did believe that he was making shit up. Because, uh, you know, I was like, really? You got them to say yes to talk to us about doing our audio drama of lock and key? So, yeah. Uh, you know, during that lock and key, those two weeks, like, Bill, you know, Bill and I were friends before, but like, that was like a really good moment to like end up like hating each other or being like best friends for life. And it's, uh, if you've never experienced, I mean basically it was like shooting a feature film. Little things go wrong here and there and you're constantly putting out little fires and Bill and I had plenty of opportunities to get into like horrible <laughs> scathing rants at each other and instead like always had each other's backs and like remember to give a high five on a good take. And like we soldiered through this like experience that was incredibly physically, yes. spiritually, and, uh, emotionally taxing and sort of came out the stronger for it. So that's kind of, you know, more or less what brings us to today. As many of you may have gathered from the email, you know, of course, but all about that Fred and I have started a part of new company, Dagaz Media. Now this has been long in the making. This is something that should have happened ages ago, working together on various projects and then always getting along, which is really, really crucial. Hmm. And that's why we wanted to invite a very select group, because you guys have really been instrumental in helping us get to this point. And I say that sincerely. It's not like uh, just working with people that you know just come in and do their jobs and then, you know, thank you for the check. <laughs> I mean, you guys have actually done things for free as well. I mean, you really have been there for us. And, I mean, we can't tell you enough how much we appreciate you guys and the, the talent and it's not just the talent I was saying this before with uh, some friends when I'm with you guys you guys really lift me up and you make me feel the best I possibly can and even when we insult you absolutely <laughs> especially <laughs> yeah because so you don't know the insults that I come back with so, yeah. Yeah. so I should keep so. doing that oh yeah, yeah. yeah because I'm, sure. I'm tabulating it all so. I, I know you are You'll realize that everybody else, hey, yeah. how much, yeah. you got paid that much? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's worth it. <laughs> but, sir, you guys have really been everything for me, so I really, I, I can't, bless you all, thank you. Yeah. thank you. Many of you know Jay Piscopo, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, Fred commissioned him to put together something to celebrate this union, and he came up with this. Oh, oh, oh my so god. Oh, man. That's so great. Awesome. Yes. Yes. We we found you'll notice did. that most of you are all in there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're all in the booth. You're all kind of trying to get, get out of here. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. there's that. That is amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing. Yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, so cool. thank you all. Yeah. Thank you thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the rebel. Yeah. Okay, you're supposed to get noisy again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>